So now that we've established a strong definition of what a biome actually is, we can start looking at different types of biomes seen all throughout ecology. The two major types that we're going to be studying are both terrestrial biomes and aquatic biomes. And we'll begin this study by looking at terrestrial biomes. And that's what we'll entitle our first flowchart on this biome study. So we'll call this terrestrial biomes. So what we have to first understand and reiterate and repeat because it's such an important factor in studying biomes altogether is the idea of climate. And remember, climate is going to be a major determinant in the distribution of species. But we're going to actually change something about this. We're going to say climate in a terrestrial biome is a major determinant determinant in distribution, just like we said before, but we're going to add a little bit of something. Distribution of plant species specifically. Why are we talking about plant species specifically and their distribution based off of climate? Well, that's because terrestrial biomes are defined by their vegetation type. Remember, we define biomes as either vegetation type or physical environment. In the case of a terrestrial biome, we look at the plants and then we base that off of our entire terrestrial biome. We give it the entire biome its idea and ideology based off of the plant species that we see. Furthermore, when we have climate, we're going to have something known as a climograph. And that's something we can literally graph and figure out based off of the information that we collect from this terrestrial biome. In the climograph, we're going to be plotting two things. It's going to be a, a complete plot of annual mean, so that's average temperature. So we're looking at the average temperature every year plus its relationship to another big part of any climate, the precipitation. So plus precipitation in a particular area. And that's how we establish a climograph. It's a plot of annual mean temperature plus the precipitation in a particular area. And that'll give us a lot of good information as to what the distribution of plant species will be. Why would it do that? Well, that's because precipitation and temperature are two critical roles, two critical characteristics determining the types of plants and how many plants and where the plants will be growing because plants rely on both temperature and water. And thus, we need a climograph to give us a good understanding understanding of the possible distribution all in respect to the climate of our terrestrial biome. Finally, we can establish some general features of terrestrial biomes, things that most terrestrial biomes all have, and we'll call this part of the flowchart just general features to be aware of. Firstly, terrestrial biomes, of course, will be named for purposes of classification, and we understand that naming is important based off of our phylogenetic studies especially. Names of terrestrial biomes will be based off of the following. They are based on both physical and chemical, so we'll say phys plus chem, features of the environment, of the biome, and also, so we'll say plus, the predominant, meaning the most prevalent, the most obvious vegetation type as well. Why vegetation? Because vegetation is going to be a critical part in understanding a terrestrial biome because this is where everything starts. Think about it. We learned about primary production, right? The idea of those autotrophs. Vegetation is essentially those autotrophs starting the entire trophic level, the trophic chains, all of those fancy interactions between species and among species all start where? They start at the most basic of vegetation, the most basic of plant species, and thus if you're on land, if you are terrestrial and you are a biome, it'll all be based off of vegetation and also physical and chemical features that we can observe. In addition, we can state that uh, in terms of general features, biomes are characterized by what lives there. So not only the vegetation type, but also characterized by what lives there. So what specifically lives there. And this is uh, something pretty obvious to most of us. Um, so we could really be interested in this because when we see what lives there, we're going to notice organisms with quite specific, quite intricate, quite beautiful 
adaptations specifically in order to live in the area, to live there, let's say. And when we see these adaptations, these specific adaptations, we can clearly see that the physical and chemical features of the biome are driving natural selection to have these certain adaptations of certain organisms to be more fit, to be more successful within their environment. Big theme that we studied in evolution, it's sort of interacting with this ecological theme of biomes as well. So it's an important characteristic there. And for example, when we think of organisms with specific adaptations, we can think of uh, the smallest of organisms when we're classifying a terrestrial biome, like the microorganisms. We can think of things like the predominant fungi of the terrestrial biome. And we can, of course, go all the way out onto the animal level as well. All of these and many more are part of this characterization of the terrestrial biome in question. Another key concept of terrestrial biomes are ecotones, or the ecotone, let's just say. This is going to be defined as the following. It's a bit fancy, the definition, but it's very easy once you look at it. It's an area of intergradation, not integration, but intergradation. So that's the key here, intergradation between adjacent terrestrial biomes. So basic idea here is the following. I have one biome, let's say biome A, right here. So I have biome A, and I have biome B, and let's say I even have biome C up here somewhere, right? And I'm going to draw a circle here. I'll draw another circle here, and draw another circle here. So sort of define these this areas that we have. What we notice is that the ecotone will be an area of intergradation between adjacent terrestrial biomes. These are all adjacent to each other. Think of adjacent as near each other. And the area of gradation will be that sort of overlapping area, that sort of in-between area, that's going to be referred to as our ecotone, the area that I colored right here. Because it's not quite a biome A, it's not quite biome C, it's not quite biome B, but it's intergradated. There's a grade of A, there's a grade of C, and a grade of B located in this inter area right here, this in-between area that will define as the ecotone. This will be a very interesting area of the terrestrial biome because there's going to be a lot of different organisms, different vegetation types all interacting. So it's a nice sort of coalescing point at which we have a terrestrial biome and a general feature of it. Finally, an important characteristic of the terrestrial biome is the vertical layering of the vegetation that we see. So we'll call this vertical layering vertical layering of vegetation. And what we mean by this is just how plants are layered from the bottom, below the bottom even, the root level, all the way to the top of the highest trees. Best way to understand this, of course, is through example, much like all of biology. And a good example is a general forest. Think of a generic forest. What we're going to have in a generic forest is the following vertical layering. Watch how I'm going from, going to go from the top of the forest to the very bottom. We're going to have what we call the top of the forest as the canopy level. That's the first vertical layer of vegetation. And if I go lower, I will call the next layer, it's called the low tree layer. Still on the tree, but at a lower point of the tree. If I continue going down on this vegetation scale, I will then reach what's called the shrub understory. So we're getting closer and closer to the ground now, and this is called the shrub understory. Then we finally reach the ground layer. You can see the idea that I'm trying to emphasize here. We're going from top to bottom, ground layer, and then we get to the point at which we would refer to as herbaceous plants. So those shrubby plants like ferns and things like that, that's going to be our herbaceous plants. Then we'll get all the way to our forest floor. This is usually actually also going to be referred to as the litter layer because there's going to be a lot of the uh, l higher layers right here. They're going to be littering their vegetation down to the forest floor, and that's why it's all often also called the litter layer. That's forest floor. And then finally, one that many people forget, we also have an entire root layer. This is an entire system full of fungi, like those mycorrhizae that we studied, full of bacteria, like those nitrifying, denitrifying bacteria that we study. All of them are going to be a part of this 
really important root layer. And so the idea here is the idea that biology that we've seen many times over is this idea of emergence, that each individual level, though important as a whole, will be the most important understanding in terms of a terrestrial biome and its vertical layering. So it's a very um, complex, it's a very nicely established layers of high to low or low to high, whichever way you look at it, that all involve these general features. And we can imagine ecotones being like these middle areas right here, 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 and here, where we have some sort of interaction, um, intergradation specifically, between the biomes that we see. So this is the idea of terrestrial biomes. Um, again, a big idea here that you want to look at is vegetation. I forgot to write this down. Vegetation is key in terrestrial biome study. That's where everything starts, and that's what everything's based off of, as stated in our climate definition over here with the plant species.